Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mast. Welcome back to some more Smite Rank Duel. Right now I am playing Kamazots versus an Uller in 1v1. Going a pretty standard build here. Death Toll into Boots Tier 1. Shell for my active and then a Health Chalice and a couple of mana potions here. I think I'm going to try something a little bit weird this game. I want to put two levels in my 1, one level in my 3. And we're going to try and clear hard because we're against an Uller. Clear is going to be an issue at this first level just because, you know, Uller 4 abilities at level 3, kind of a problem. Uh, he clears very well. He can take sides there. I'm not going to contest those. I need to hold my cooldowns and he can win a trade, so we're not going to contest that. He does not have bluestone, so his clear is going to be a little bit lacking compared to normal. He will need to use his jump to clear quite as well. We're going to jump on a Yarchers here in the back. Try and cleave these out if possible. There we go. So clear is going to be fairly even there. I will go ahead and lose two abilities right now at this point. But I think I can actually trade okay here for just temporarily while I get my jump back off cooldown. Go ahead and jump on him here. That's going to help me a lot in this trade gonna pop shell early here because I knew that stun was coming so the mana trade was really good in my favor that was a big thing that happened there is he had to spam so much more for his cooldowns in order to actually uh fight there so he he lost a lot of mana and he doesn't have a mana chalice he's doing the exact same build as me so we can look for a trade here try and force his jump if he doesn't jump he's dead wow okay did he not have mana for jump I could have sworn he had it I was just trying to force him off that trade went really well in my favor I did not expect it to go that well. We're going to see if we have the damage here to do the red buff. I probably don't, but I'm going to try my hardest. Oh, I think I do, actually. Yeah, just barely. You should be getting here right now. There he is. Perfect. So I've still got one mana potion, but I would like to back here. I think I will definitely try to. Let's see if he's going to stop my back. He is. Juke out the stun real quick. There we go. We'll be safe. As long as I could, I, w I wasn't going to die either way, but that way I can get back to base pretty quickly. He's going to look to invade blue here, possibly. Uh, looks like not. He backed off. Maybe a little bit scared here because I got that early kill on him. I definitely uh, would have gone for blue in, in his shoes there. He, he definitely could have done that, but I'll take it, man. Uh, I would love to have my blue buff, you know? So minion wave's pretty close. Oh, actually, wa wave's colliding down here for some reason. Uh, I guess my wave got a little bit pushed by him. That's kind of weird. Um... But we'll go ahead and try and clear this out, and then we'll look to do blue here in a second. Poke max range with that. Oh, I missed the, I missed the three. That's actually pretty bad for this trade now. Luckily, he did not have too much up. I think he still had cooldowns from doing blue buff there. I need to sustain up somehow. Um, he does have a bracer important to note in this in this uh, matchup, so anti-heal will be great for me getting a brawler later in this game. Try and jump through, get some damage that way. Try and get the two on him if I can with his jump still up. I can't use my ultimate because he's just going to survive. Maybe a one, though. That'll help a lot. So I can try and force him off pretty hard here. He should just back after this after this archer clear right here. Is he going to do that or is he going to be greedy? Looks like he will back. Oh, no, he's being greedy. We're going to definitely look to fight him here. If I can chase him under tower with ultimate, he doesn't have good mobility outside of his jump. So I will play this very aggressive as possible. Try and juke out the stun. It happened. Can I hit him with a slow? No, we're going to try and kill him with the ult. No, couldn't quite get it. Too bad. I almost had the third hit. I think the third hit would have been enough. Uh, if I can hit level 7, I can snipe him. Not enough damage, though. Wanted the one more level in my in my one there to try and kill him. Um, that's why I was looking for level 7 real quick, which was a good idea, and it actually it worked and everything. I just didn't quite have as much damage as I needed, so he was still able to live, no problem. So I do strongly recommend going Death Soul on Kamazots. I've played a decent amount of him now. Not a ton, but a decent amount. And I really do feel like Death Toll is more worth it on him than uh, than Bluestone. Even though Bluestone's great for his clear, De uh, Death Toll's just so great for his sustain. And he's able to clear well even with Death Toll. And especially because he's got a cleave on that third auto attack, he can make use of the cleave as well and just regen so, so much, which is just awesome. I think we will look for blue right here. I definitely need to try and get this farm for sure, but I think I'll even try and pick it up as well. He's going to contest here. I will look for a trade. Again, juking out the stun. He can maybe take blue. Oh, I got it too. That's really good for me. And because he uses jump, he should be pretty dead here. One more auto. No, one more. There we go. Very aggressive on his part. He knew I didn't have my ultimate, which is why he played that as aggressive as he did. Uh, so I understand that thought process there, but... Made a mistake, man. Can't just jump in on a Kamazots like that. Can't just do that. But we'll go ahead and clear out this wave, then look to take down that red buff that's about to spawn right now. I'll actually jump to clear this a little bit quicker. Force him under tower there. We'll look to secure this. 
If he holds his three, which it looks like he's trying to, he's going to have a chance to contest this. We will try and out secure him. Oh, when he, I gave it up. That was just totally misplay on my part, giving that up that easy. Got that on him. If I can force his jump. Okay, we're going to dive anyways. That's going to force him off. At least he can't pick up his red buff. I don't know if his blue is up or not, so we're going to try and take his blue away. It's not. Okay. Oh, it's up right now. That's actually great timing. I should have enough damage to get it done real quick. Awesome. And let's back real quick, get Breastplate done. Very, very important to go Breastplate on any sort of ability-based assassin or warrior. Uh, whenever you're against a hunter or another physical, Breastplate is just an incredibly strong item in general in 1v1 because you're getting a good amount of protections for a fairly low price and 20% cooldown, which is really, really valuable. So I strongly recommend you to go that second item in a lot of matchups. And on a lot of mages, if you're a mage versus physical, you often want to go Breastplate as your third item. Try and poke him out, keep him from backing real quick. Ooh, rough stun for him. Go ahead and get that power buff real quick. Definitely want to look for trades right now. I am very ahead. Ooh, he actually jumped away that time. I guess he didn't have his axe up quite yet, so that was, that was a bad jump on my part. Again, I'm trying to use my jump mostly as a way to avoid his stun. Uh, one of the good things for me is that he's been pretty predictable with his stun. One thing that you want to do in a matchup like this is you want to try and not be too predictable with your stun timing. A lot of the time on a god like Uller, you get pretty comfortable. You start using things with certain timings, and when you're against a god like Kamazots, who have played well, can actually use his jump basically as just a juke, as, as an immunity frame, um, then he can just go ahead and uh, try and mess up, mess with his timing a little bit, and that'll kind of keep me a little bit more confused. That was bad for me, missing both of my damage abilities there. We're going to look to sustain a little bit, try and hit him and wave here if possible with my jump. I can still trade through the wave right now because I've got my cleave, and if I can... Oh, I didn't get a good one there. Okay, he's going to use Bracer and his jump there to get out. That's okay. Ooh, juked it though. And he's going back in with me. If I hit that slow, he'd be dead. Now I'm not so sure if he's going to be. We're going to try and dive though, because I've almost got my two up. Damn. He had his jump just in time to save him there. Is he going to mess up? No, he backed off far enough. I stopped his back. I couldn't actually reach him with that. I just wanted to stop his back there if I could. Mistakes on his part, man. I Oh, no, I don't have it. Wow. I might die. Wow. Okay. Oh, I missed that one really badly there. So I knew he hadn't backed off there. I was pretty sure he was hugging that wall looking for that sort of a... Uh... Here, I'll show you in a second once I get this wave cleared. Looking for this view right here, he can look around the wall like that when I can't see him. So I was pretty sure he was looking for that, which is why I jumped over. I knew he didn't have much mana. He probably wouldn't expect a jump. So I was hoping to either kill him with a jump auto, or uh, or if I miss the jump, just hit him with the one right after and finish him off. That was a greedy play. It's possible that it wouldn't have worked out, uh, but he was not expecting it either way, and it still worked out pretty decently, even though I missed the one. Definitely going into a Thorns next. We will go ahead and go into Jotun's after this. Go ahead and get our CDR a little bit upped. Uh, does he have life steal yet? He's working into it right now, so pretty good timing for that. I can go ahead and get Jotun's done before Brawlers, and as he gets life steal done, then I can go into Brawlers, cancel out his healing, cancel out a lot of his bracer. Not really cancel his healing, but make his healing a lot weaker from life steal, and then also uh, weaken his bracer with Brawlers. Brawlers is a very good item for life steal and healing, uh, as well as bracer, of course, because bracer is a heal. Okay, so we can go ahead and clear out this wave here. Look for a little bit of pressure. Did my one, did I miss my one? What did I do there? Guess I was zoned out, man. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why I missed that. I'm trying to poke a little with the one there. I can trade him pretty decently, even when he sits under his tower like this. I can definitely trade pretty well. And with his, oh, let's pop thorns real quick. There we go. That's going to force him off. That's going to pop his bracer. I was hoping to get his jump there. Decent amount of healing there. Trying to use that too when I can. Ooh, bad one. That was a pretty bad one. Let's go ahead and get blue timer real quick. Pretty sure this is going to be down for at least another minute. Go ahead and use my passive real quick so I can sustain up. Don't really need to back yet. I would like to get Jotun's done, but I do want to make sure I clear this wave. Keep pressure for now. We'll just cleave this out. Probably look to back right now.
Okay, we'll see if he wants to stop me. I don't think he should be able to do anything here. All the buffs are down. Bull Demon should not be something that he can get at the moment. We're going to finish off that. We're going to go into Bracer and get a couple of mana potions. Okay, so looking at his second active, he just got a Horrific done. Horrific is going to be something a little bit interesting in this matchup. It's going to keep me slowed, which is going to make it hard to engage on him. What I want to look to do is try and cancel out that Horrific with my ultimate, because it's not going to slow me in my ultimate. Uh, I'm still going to have a lot of mobility there, so I will look to use that to my advantage. I played that really aggressively in the fight, which is probably a mistake. I'm going to take a lot of damage here trying to clear this wave out without using my two to clear it. But I do win this part of the trade right here. We can jump down on him, try and force him to back or use Horrific or something here. Ooh, almost got him with the two there. He went ahead and jumped out instead. We could look to engage here with his... Uh, Oh, he's going to tank that? That's that's a kill. Wow. I can't believe he didn't try and just juke it out. That was a huge mistake on his part. Can I use his passive? Yes. Sustain up a bunch right here at the edge. Yeah, he should have definitely looked to just juke that out and back. I can't believe he actually stayed for that because, I mean, I think he should have known my ultimate was up. And that's the thing is like with his jump down, that was a free kill with my ultimate. So all I had to do is look to stay alive, get in range with my ult, and he was going to be pretty dead there. Okay, we're going to look to do red immediately because he's going to be running back from base, so he'll be here very quickly. Just try and burn this down real quick before he has any chance to contest it. There we go. That's the red buff. Looks like he's going to push wave, so we will stick around real quick and make sure I can defend that. I will also try and get brawlers done real quick here. Right now, he's going into defense of his own, as he should. Normally, that's the fourth item on ADCs. Normally goes Warrior Tabby, AK Vol, Devos into a uh, Breastplate or Nemean. So we'll go ahead and get brawlers done here in just a second. There we go. There's a chance he could be greedy here. He could go for a bull demon if he wanted to do that. I think that would actually be a pretty smart play on his part, knowing I just backed, at least trying to do it and looking to back off. Um, so there's a chance he did that. I'm not sure. Most people aren't ballsy enough to do it. I think he probably had the damage to get it done. Oh, I didn't get the uh, power from that. I can still trade here. He's looking to fight a little bit with that stun, but he can't really do anything with it. Looks like he'll probably just fully disengage here. It sounded like he used his two to back off even farther. In that case, oh yeah, he backed right there. We're going to look to burn down the bull demon here. And with minions pushing up, perfect time to do it. I'm going to have vision from these guys. If I'll know if he's clearing the wave or if he's coming down this way, just because he won't be on wave if he does. Go ahead and burn this down real quick. He's on the wave right now. This should be bull demon done in time. He's probably going to try and get over here, but he's not going to get here in time for it. I'm actually going to save cooldowns because I've got enough time to do that. Jump on him real quick. We're going to look for the ultimate with his jump. Oh, that was a terrible ult on my part. Snipe him. There we go. I think he was trying to time his jump for that, which was smart on his part. Listening for that sound cue of my two to go ahead and finally jump out. That was a decent play. I mean, really, he should have just jumped out anyways. Like, he didn't need to save jump there, but I can, I can see it still being a smart idea. In general, it's a good idea. There, it was kind of unnecessary. Uh, we'll go Nemia next and get a little more defense. Since we're going to be pushing aggressively here, I would like to have a little more protections to deal with Titan damage as I start pushing into his Phoenix, as well as Phoenix damage. I don't have Phoenix secured yet. I just have the Bull Demon buff for 50 seconds or so. And pushing Wave is smart on his part here. Pushing this aggressively, knowing that I'm not here to fight him on this Wave yet, is really good because that's going to give him another 30 seconds of no minions to worry about. Really, I just I don't think I'm going to have minions in time at all to really deal with this Phoenix. I'm just going to try and poke it down on my own which is going to make it a lot harder and a lot slower for me. Go ahead and cleave these minions out. Okay, so we're going to look to trade if I can here while using cooldowns around the Phoenix. That's going to be the goal here is do damage over time and spam cooldowns on him when I have them. That's going to make it harder to fight him, but it is going to let me get a lot of Phoenix damage done and I can still trade decently because this is still somewhat what I want to do when I'm fighting him. I'm just spamming cooldowns once I have them up, and he just doesn't really have great damage to deal with me, and I'm still juking autos when I can. There we go. That's the Phoenix down, man. That's the goal right there. Just trying to get that done is so, so important. So now I'm going to have fire minions pushing right after this wave here. What I want to look to do is get red buff done as soon as it spawns. I don't care about this wave. It's not a fire wave. It's not important. And then we will look to push with the next wave spawning down here. Uh, it'll be spawning pretty soon. I think he might have wanted to contest red buff. He didn't have the time to get there. It looks like he realized that and backed off. Um, I don't quite have money for Nemean, and I don't want to wait because this fire wave is going to be here soon. So we'll go ahead and sell that, buy a Nemean, and then we'll also buy a po potion of might real quick just because I have the money for it. That's going to give me a big damage spike because this actually increases your ability damage as well, uh, which is really, really valuable for me. Let's see if he clears this early or not. And it looks like he will be a little more frightened of the fire wave. That's not too surprising. Um, 
He didn't know for sure that I backed. I could have been on my blue there. So I think personally, I would have tried to clear a little bit aggressive and look to back off as soon as I spotted myself if I'm playing Ula versus Kamazots there because getting any damage on Fireway is pretty important. Able to force his jump early. That's really good here because I want to look to kill him on the Titan here with that down. Oh, and bad miss on my part, but I think I've got this anyways. No, not quite. Bracer's going to keep him alive. I would have had to dive Fountain there if I wanted to go for it, which isn't worth. But I can maybe do something here with that. There we go. He's going to he's gonna be forced to jump out again. That slow is actually pretty deadly for me. Uh, he hasn't fully healed up. We're going to pop our shell real quick just to stay safe for the moment. And then I can heal up a ton with my two and my one here. And now I don't think he's got a good shot of fighting me. Go ahead and juke behind the minion real quick. Block that axe. That was good. This might be the game over right here. Got it. So there's a 4-0 Kamazots game for you guys. That is a look at how to play him as an assassin in 1v1. Assassins aren't very dominant in 1v1, but Kamazots is one of those guys that's definitely been around the meta for a while now, and it's because you can play him like this. This was actually a pretty good matchup to look at the playstyle because I actually wasn't able to just farm him like I could some of characters. He definitely played passive uh, for the most... I mean, I shouldn't say passive. He played smart with his jump. He kept his jump up, which is one of the big struggles for Kamazots, you know? Um... You've got your ultimate to just decimate somebody at about melee range, but if somebody's actually leaping out to escape that ultimate, it's a lot harder to fight them. So in a spot like that where they do have a jump to use their, to their advantage, then you want to try and just basically brawl them with your abilities and look to bait that jump eventually. It's okay if you get low, and then you can use your ultimate and chase them down once they finally jump out. Then you can try and get close with your ult and hit two to three shots of your ultimate, get a lot of damage that way. So thank you guys for watching. That was some Kamazots gameplay. I guess I should go over the last item of the build. Last item of the build would have been Titan's Bane, getting penetration through these items, defense on these two items right here. Normally on an Assassin or Warrior, you want to get at least two defense items. And then, especially for Assassins, ability-based Assassins like this, Jotun's is very important for cooldown and pen. Brawler's generally important for anti-heal, especially versus an ADC. He has lifesteal here, healing on Bracer. Good to get Brawler's and negate that. Brawler's is very valuable because it's eight seconds of anti-healing. And then Titan's Bane is going to be important to get through his Nemean, which you're pretty much always going to see a Nemean or a Breastplate in a matchup like that. Titan's Bane is great for reducing penetration from, from our uh, protections from a full defense item. So thanks for watching, guys. I will see you all in the next one. I've been seeking for the glory. Say, say, say my name. And I've been trying to wrap my own story in the search for fame. I'm sitting here in this empty room, walls keep tumbling down.